This video contains everything you need to create an algo trading strategy in cryptocurrency in Python. These ideas will also be applicable to creating stock or options algorithmic trading strategies for coding in Python. Uh, it will be also similar in C++. So if you've ever wanted to create some trading strategies with code, if you have some ideas that you want to implement, this video will show you these insights uh, for exactly how you can do that. And we're going to see a, an example, a working example, where we will actually be placing orders on the market in a real account, live trading, completely automated, and it will be looping through, getting data, creating historical data um, calculations, and placing orders based on this simple strategy here. So let's get started. Now, when you set up, you are going to need this thing called CCXT, which is a cryptocurrency exchange library. Now, this is good because this library will work for pretty much any cryptocurrency exchange. We are using Kraken here, but you don't need to have Kraken. Uh, this is going to work for pretty much any uh, account. Now, to create all this code, I actually didn't even have to look at any of the documentation. I just used ChatGPT and it basically gave me everything I needed. So this is really easy for you to do if you just watch this video and see just the basic ideas here, which I'm gonna show you and these basic insights, which are the fundamentals to just setting up a strategy. Uh, now, I'm not promising that this strategy is gonna make money. In fact, this strategy will probably lose money. So definitely do not try to run this strategy yourself. However, this will get you started with doing this stuff. So we have created this uh, object here. I'm gonna call it Kraken, but as I said before, you can use this with any cryptocurrency exchange and you could name this whatever you want. But it is using the Kraken part of the CCXT um, library here. Now you could also do this with Coinbase or uh, Gemini or Binance or whatever else you have to check out uh, CCXT. Um, but probably you can just write the name of your exchange here and just do everything the same. So every uh, exchange, including stock exchanges, they're all going to give you a API key, which is a string. And here I have put that string into my envir environment variable so that you cannot see it, so that you cannot access my account. And basically, uh, this will now allow me to start creating orders now that I have given the code my keys, which I got from Kraken. To get that, you just have to go somewhere in the settings. Uh, so it's different every time. You go somewhere in the settings and they'll just give you those keys. So now let's place an order here. So we have already placed an order. So let's see. So we're buying Bitcoin limit order at $20,000, this much Bitcoin. As you can see, we have placed the order right now. So that's pretty cool. We have already placed this order, but right now there's no kind of uh, automation going on with the strategy. So let's get into that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some historical data. Uh, and we're going to be then going through, I'll just jump ahead here to show you what's going to happen in the final part. The final part, we're going to have a while loop. The while loop is going to just go on forever. There's going to be some time when it sleeps so that it doesn't just go too fast. We're going to get some data. We are going to do something to that data, do some calculation, and then we're going to run this strategy function, which is going to place the orders uh, that we need to do. So this is like the kind of uh, main part of the code. And let's see these other steps to lead up to that. So we're going to get the historical data. And we see already that, okay, this is a Unix timestamp. So this is the most recent one. And we have open high, low close for the Bitcoin price here. And we have a one minute time frame. So as you can see, this is 60 seconds, so this is 60,000 uh, milliseconds here. So this is 60,000 milliseconds after this one, which is, so these are one minute bars, so that looks good. 
Now, uh, we're going to do a, a moving average here. So a moving average, you can see it here. It is just the 20, uh, well, we're going to use a 20 day moving average here, 20 period moving average it is just the previous 20 bars and you average them together and that gives you this smooth curve here. So we are going to create our own moving average here. As you can see, we have already created the column. So to create a column in pandas, uh, so we have you know imported pandas here, SPD. Uh, to create a column in pandas, you need to do this. So now we're going to take the rolling uh, 20, 20 uh, period rolling history here and then take the mean. And that's how we create this. Now you'll see an NAN here. So the first 20 will have NAN because there's not enough um, periods to go back and calculate that. So it'll just give you an NAN. And if you went to the 21st row here, you would start to see numbers. So anyway, we will now plot this. It's a good idea to plot things that you've calculated just to make sure that you're doing it right. And this looks pretty reasonable here. Remember, this is the Unix timestamp. So we have these numbers here. You should convert that to dates if you're going to be uh, showing this to somebody or looking at it. So this looks pretty good here. And basically, the strategy is just going to be that we're going to be buying Bitcoin when it goes below the moving average by a certain amount. As I said, I don't recommend this strategy in any way. And I'm not just saying that as a not financial advice thing. I just wouldn't use this because it's just not a good enough strategy to be expected to make money here. So anyway, next we will define our trading strategy. So see here that we will take in our data frame and we're going to do is, uh, well, let's just see what we're doing here. When we go through the loop, we're going to fetch the data, right? So we're getting the open, high, low, close volume, as I show you here, each time in the loop. Then we will create the data frame. Uh, we're printing something here just to make it easy to see if our code is running when we actually run it. We will create the moving average. So every single time we loop, we are creating a new column here. And then we will get rid of those NAs, right? Okay, so now we're going to have basically this, right? Well, dropping the first 20. Um, and then we're going to run the trading strategy function on what we have remaining here. So what that's going to do is it's just going to take, we're only interested in the last row. So we're going to take the tail, which is going to give us the last row here. And then we're going to get the close value, which will be this. And then we're going to get the moving average value, which will be this. And then we're going to say, OK, if close is less than moving average times some parameter. So I just put 1.1 in here because like I want this to actually always run so you can see what's going on. But like you can put like if you put, say, 0.99, and that would mean that only if the close is less than, say, 1% below the moving average, right? So this is moving average times 0.99. So that would be 99% of the moving average. So it's like if the close has a little bit of cushion below the moving average, so like if it was, say, here, right, then it would execute a buy, right? So just an example. <clears throat> So we'll just put that back to 1.1 just to make sure that it runs. And what I mean is that it's basically almost always going to be below this times 1.1. So if that happens, so if we're in that situation, then we're going to create the order. Okay, and the order is going to be to buy this amount of Bitcoin. And just because I don't want this thing to actually run, I am going to put the order at 1,000 below the close. Right, so whatever the close is, which is now around 28,000, it'll just put the order in at say 27,000 or something because I don't want to actually do this trade here because it will, it will actually trade and charge me fees and so on. So let's see what's going to happen here. And by the way, often uh, these things will require strings. So a lot of times when you are dealing with some calculations here, 
with all these uh, trading strategy code, you will often have to put sometimes a string or sometimes a float. So sometimes you'll get an error there and it's often that you have to write the, the right format there. So let's just <coughs> do this and we will see here. So let's, let's get rid of this uh, order that I have placed. And hopefully this is going to run now, but uh, no guarantee on that. Okay, so it looks like um, it looks like something happened here, and it looks like we are in fact running a loop here. So, in fact, we have indeed placed the order at twenty-seven thousand one hundred thirty-six, and in another. 60 seconds okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to stop this code right with control c because see this strategy has some really bad dangerous properties to it right now because what's going to happen is this is going to keep running and it is going to continuously place these orders so you can see here that even though i have stopped the code right the order is still there so we will note that if we let this thing keep running, by the way, it will keep looping every 60 seconds and it will just continuously place orders to the point that it will just basically keep going until your account runs out of money placing orders here. So what you will usually need in a strategy is to find a way to query the exchange, your account, and basically ask it, you know, which orders do I have right now and potentially cancel them and so on, or just like see like, okay, I only want to have a max of, you know, one Bitcoin of limit orders out there to buy. And so if you've already got one Bitcoin and limit orders, then you're going to want to cancel some of that before placing some new orders. So anyway, that's pretty much it for for this basic strategy here so if there's interest here uh, you can write in the comments if people are interested in this sort of thing uh, i do a lot of this stuff myself i can start doing some videos about how to actually you know do some little bit more meaningful strategies where you're actually trying to predict things to actually have some hope of trying to make money but of course it is very difficult to predict the market, but it is definitely interesting to try to do that on here. So thanks.